Hi everybody, this is Lara at Pure Elliott Wave with a short video for you on a just a pure technical analysis topic. This is not going to be analysis of any specific market. I want to take a look at the correlation coefficient for a bunch of markets. Quite often people will make comments on my YouTube channel and in my membership as well um, stating Lara, this market, usually the US dollar index or gold or the S&P is doing XYZ and so don't you think this other market should also be doing or should be doing the opposite or should be doing exactly the same because of an assumed correlation between the two. I don't like unacknowledged assumptions. Sometimes we have to make assumptions, but when we do, we need to acknowledge them so that we know what we're doing. If we don't acknowledge our assumptions, then our conclusions aren't going to be accurate. And I like to use the correlation coefficient to measure assumptions between correlations between two markets. So in this video, I'm going to look at a bunch of assumed correlations between a bunch of markets, and we're going to use the math and have a look. Are they actually correlated? A correlation coefficient is a mathematical statistical test between two sets of data and it will tell you if they have a strong positive correlation through to a weak positive correlation through to absolutely no correlation through to a negative correlation. It's important to understand how to read the correlation coefficient. There aren't absolute definitive guidelines but I like to read it like this. Here's for example a chart of Bitcoin on a daily candlestick chart and here I've got the correlation coefficient between Bitcoin and Ethereum. When you look at two charts of them side by side it looks like they do move together but if you take a closer look at the peaks, the highs and lows and you look at each day and how they move you'll soon discover that they don't always move together. They can peak at slightly different times and trough at slightly different times. They can turn in different dates and they can move with strength on different dates. So let's have a look at the correlation coefficient. This is how I'm reading it. So positive 1 is a fully positive correlation negative one is a fully negative correlation and this shaded here area here between positive 0.5 and negative 0.5 is a weak positive correlation and a weak negative correlation and so any correlation coefficient that moves through this shaded area at that time the correlation is too weak to be reliable if you see a correlation coefficient between two markets that moves from fully positive through weak positive, weak negative, down to fully weak, uh, strong negative, sorry, then it's most likely moving like that due to chance, not due to any actual relationship between the two markets. Now we would assume, and it would seem to be a reasonable assumption, that Bitcoin and Ethereum would have a positive correlation. When you look at their charts, it looks like they move together, but the math tells us that, tells us that it's unreliable. Back here in May, and this is a daily candlestick chart of Bitcoin, so here we're going back to May 2021, they had a weak negative correlation. Here again, it was weak negative. A lot of the time it is a strong positive correlation, but the price history and the math shows us that if it is currently strongly positive as it is now, we absolutely cannot rely upon that continuing because the past history of the two markets shows it has failed and even moved into negative territory before. Here's another assumption, and this was a comment someone made about a week ago, they're assuming that because Riot uses Bitcoin and uses cryptocurrencies for its business that it should have a strong positive correlation with Bitcoin and when you look at the two charts they do appear to move together but again absolutely unreliable. Here it moved into a strong negative correlation albeit extremely briefly. Most of the time it is a positive correlation but the history shows that assumption is completely unreliable. There is absolutely nothing to say that although it is a positive correlation today, it has to be the same next week. That could break down at any time. Here's, the, here's Bitcoin with the S&P 500. This is an example of it, two markets that are just absolutely not reliably correlated at all. Bitcoin to US dollars, absolutely no reliable correlation whatsoever. And finally, Bitcoin to gold, again, absolutely no reliable correlation whatsoever. Let's look at some common or some markets which are commonly expected or assumed to correlate with the S&P. 
I haven't drawn my um, my little boxes here, but here's positive 5, here's negative 5. There is actually no statistically reliable and significant correlation between the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. At this point here, again a daily candlestick chart, this time this is a daily candlestick chart of the S&P. In these two points here, it moves to, here it's neutral, absolutely no correlation, and here, in between June and July this year, it dipped to very weakly negative and so there is no reliable correlation even between the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. There's no reliable correlation between the S&P and the US dollar index. And this is a common assumption. So many people assume that they should be related. The math shows that those two sets of data just aren't. And there's no correlation, not a reliable one, between the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones transportation average. Let's look at a market that does have a strong correlation coefficient. There is a very strong and very reliable statistically significant correlation between the US dollar index and the euro dollar, which as you would expect. This correlation coefficient reliably sits in very strong negative territory below negative 0.5. It usually sits below negative 0.9. That's a very strong negative correlation. And so it would be safe to assume if you're confident that one of those markets is going to move in one direction, then you should be reasonably confident that the other market will move in the opposite direction because the correlation is negative. There is also a reliable and statistically significant correlation between the US dollar index and the British pound. It's reliably negative. If the US dollar index is going to go up and you're confident of that for whatever reason, then you could reasonably assume that the British pound should go down because they have a strong, statistically significant negative correlation. Here's another assumption. Let's test it with the correlation coefficient. The US dollar index to gold usually has a negative correlation, but at times it can swing right through zero into positive territory into, at this point here, above 0.5, a strong positive correlation. So again, the price history and the data, or the history of these two sets of data, shows absolutely that even though there may be a correlation from time to time, you cannot rely on it continuing. And this is a long-term view. All the other charts were daily candlestick charts. Now I'm looking at gold on a monthly candlestick chart. Let's look at some more assumptions between gold and copper. These two metals, there is absolutely no reliable, statistically significant correlation coefficient. The correlation spends too much time in the shaded area, and moves fully from positive through to negative. Any relationship that these two markets have from time to time should be assumed to be due to chance. Here's another really strongly commonly held assumption. Gold and silver should be positively correlated, surely. No, they're not. Well, they often are, but again, the price history or the history of these two sets of data show that although they do often have a strong positive correlation, you cannot rely and assume, rely on it. You can't assume it will continue. It can move fully almost, well, it touched zero here. There is At this point, there is no statistical correlation between the two sets of data. And here again, it's close enough to zero to say that there's no correlation. The history shows that the positive correlation that often exists between these two sets of data can absolutely break down again at any time. It is unreliable. And finally, gold in the US dollar index. Again, I think we've already looked at this one when I looked at the US dollar index, did we? Yes, we did. Now we're looking at it on a long-term chart. Often it has a negative correlation, but that can swing right through to fully positive. Any correlation, these two sets of data may, ha may exhibit from time to time, absolutely cannot be relied upon. So I just wanted to make this little video just to show you a few commonly assumed correlations and to show you how to use this handy tool from stock charts a correlation coefficient to test your assumptions acknowledge assumptions use maths if there is a good mathematical test use the math to test it and adjust your expectations accordingly i would rather make expectations based on facts and data 
rather than on feelings and what I think should be happening. I think that's a much better logical approach to technical analysis. Thanks for watching this extra video.